represent the effort of what Minnesotaram in the state of Minnesota. This program aims at promoting the Buddha's teaching um, in English so that people who could not understand Khmer can learn from what the Buddha taught and also aims to promote the peaceful and mindful living through the Buddha's teaching to build social harmony among people of all faiths, to uphold and propagate Buddhism along with Khmer culture among my Americans, especially the youths. Today, it is such an honor for us to come back again with another very interesting topic entitled the Buddhist concept of karma. So to get to learn more in depth what karma really means in the Buddha's teaching, what how many types of karma are there and how the karma give and bear result. So to understand this in depth, we will hear from most memorable speakers that we have invited. Uh, first, we have invited most memorable Mangala Joto Singwati. He currently resides in Wat Ram, California. And we also invite Venerable Maha Panyo Tung Tang Liu Sien Justin, also from California. So it's a great pleasure uh, and welcome uh, both Venerable Dhamma speakers for spending time to join and share with us in today's program. So without further ado, uh, let me uh, start the, our program right now by asking the very first question to Venerable Mahapanyo. Uh, let me call you in short, Venerable Justin. How have you been, Pante? Uh, been pretty well, actually. Uh, it's a, a little bit hectic, but it's OK, you know, due to the uh, pandemic, it's expected. Yeah. Yes. So yes. when when did you return to USA? Um, on the very first day of the uh, rainy season, the end of the rainy season, which is the second of October uh, last year, and arrived in the United States also the second of October as well. So right now, uh, which monastery are you dwelling? I am residing in Santa Ana Monastery. It's in Santa Ana City. Yes, California. Is it, the, is it in the north or south? No, it's towards south. Oh, uh, towards the south. San Diego, well, not close to San Diego. You know where Long Beach is, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, approximately half an hour from Long so Beach. How many monks are there at your monastery? Uh, right now, six, including me. Oh, is everyone doing okay? Yeah, everyone's doing okay. They're all getting the shots. Um, they had the second doses a few days ago, except mm -hmm. me. Oh, you, you, you didn't get the vaccine? No, that's why I'm using this mask all the time. It's okay. Um, yeah, uh, I just got my second dose uh, one hour ago, you know. So, yeah, oh. I'm feeling good. I mean, I'm still, I'm, I'm, fi I'm feeling fine right now, but I don't know what happened the next day. So some people say they get sick after the second dose, you know, probably or maybe tomorrow or tonight. So anyway, uh, let's get back to our topic. Uh, we are going to discuss about yeah, the Buddhist concept of karma. Of course, uh, karma is a very important concept in the teaching of the Buddha. Uh, I think all of us are very familiar uh, with this term karma, but how much we understand about this term, I'm not sure. So. Today, we're going to find out, uh, you know, dive deep in detail about what karma really is, how the Buddha expound this theory of, you know, of karma. So let's hear from uh, Most Venerable Mahapanyo uh, Justin. Can you define the term karma according to what you have researched, according to the teachings of the Buddha on day, please? Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Namaskar to all the most venerable monks out there. Um, according to my research, uh, in the Buddhist tradition, the term karma in Buddhism, it is a, karma refers to actions. Okay? It refers to action that is driven by intention. Uh, which will lead, which will lead to future consequences. That's what I wrote down. Okay. According to the Buddha, 
I'm going to go ahead and and um, read what I have uh, uh, noted down. It's in Machima Nikaya 135. Machima Nikaya 135, the Buddha said that beings are owners to the karma. It is karma that differentiate beings according in, to inferiority and superiority. So according to that particular sutta, in life, Kula Kama Vibhanga Sutta is that human beings are accountable to their own actions. So each one of us needs to understand um, in regards of our action. If we do good, good will return. If we do bad, bad will return, okay? And the intention of performing that one will need to comprehend is the body, speech, and mind. If one were to conduct it improperly, one expected the improper in return. So each one of us, um, in order for us to comprehend karma properly, one needs to experience it. There's so many um, story which I want to bring it up, but I'm gonna go ahead, elucidate up on my own personal experience. Way back in, February 9, 2020, I supposed to meet the most venerable Sok Thierry on the 10th of February to edit my, uh, edit his books, one of his books. And what happened, I had this excruciating pain below my shoulder blade, my right shoulder blade, it's pinching, it's stabbing pain. I went to the, see the doctor back in the motherland. They could not find anything wrong with me. They expect it to be a, um, stone uh, in my uh, kidney. Uh, kidney stone, but it came out negative. And on March 3rd, the beginning of this month, I had the same excruciating pain. Okay. So I went to an emergency. Uh, my Upasambada Maha Yunun took me to the emergency here. They expected the same thing, kidney stone, okay? Um, however, they could not find anything wrong with me. Came out negative, all negative. Then I contemplate upon what I have done when I was a lay person. And during that time, I believe in Christianity. So, without thinking of killing anything would come back to me. 
I cook crabs, before I cook them, before I boil them, I stabbed it, stabbed it with a very sharp knife. I, I feel sorry for the crab if I were to boil it. While it was alive, probably painful and you know, very hot. And so I killed it, I stopped it, several of them. When I cogitate upon that situation, I realized, you know, everything's all the tests came out negative. No kidney stone. Um, I'm still trying to figure out why the pain was there. There still can be more tests, but up to this point, I realized that my bad karma caught up with me. That excruciating pain, just like stopping. So that's karma for you. Okay, this is reality. It's, I didn't get it from anyone. It is personal. Oh, it yeah, happened to me personally. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that bad karma is there. It's there. Whether you believe it or not, if you want to experience it, which I do not suggest for anyone to experience it. And, um, it's quite painful. So up to this point, my bad karma had caught up with me. I don't know if that's making any sense. So- um, Yeah, yeah, Fante, thank you. I think you brought up a very interesting you know, experience of yourself about how uh, you know, to let people understand the theory of karma. So you also raised about intentional or volitional action, right? That is called karma, uh, according to the teaching of the Buddha. Like the Buddha said, Jetana Hang Kamang Vadamit pick away, right? Oh people, right. um, you know, volitional action that I call as a karma. So let me hear from Varabha Singwati as well. Can you uh, may you you may be having a different uh, definition or you want to add to that about the definition of uh, the karma and also you may include uh, the different types of karma as well. Thank you, Pante Sutiri. Actually, the word karma is in Pali word. And here, according to a book written by Dr. Mamtin Non, he wrote a book entitled Karma is a real creator. In his book, he mentioned that karma's main action or deed. And the Sanskrit word equal to the word karma is karma. And only volitional action is called karma. So whatever action that we perform without intention or volition, it is not a kind of karma, according to Buddhist perspective. For example, when we drive the car along the road, sometimes we kill the insect or fish or frogs along the road. But many questions arise, arise that whether the person who drive the car and kills fish and frog a small insect along the road, will they commit bad karma or not? But here in Buddhism, it is said, no. If we don't have intention to kill them, or we don't have volition to kill them, we don't commit any bad karma. The word karma is only accompanied by action and volition. That is called karma. An action without volition or intention is not karma, actually. The reason is that it is volition, chetana, which accomplished by an action. That is real karma, according to this perspective. For example, if we, intend, uh, we unintentionally step on ants, 
and they die, this does not give a rise to karma. And, and if we intention, intentionally step on the end to kill them and they die, that is an unwholesome karma is formed, you know? So when we kill something with our intention or volition, then the word karma is forms or arise because it arrived together with our intention. That's, that's it. And so we should regard karma as well as no action or intentional deed. Karma is not luck. We imply that something happened without a cause. Karma itself is a cause and it will produce its appropriate effect. Nothing happened without a cause in Buddhism. Remember that. And one is lucky or not, depending on the effects of the Buddhist no action, one has done previously in the present existence or in the past existence. So only when we understand correctly the principle of karma and in effect that we will possess right understanding about it. Yes, thank you. I just yeah, thank thank you so much. Yeah. See this question. Yeah, thank you so much for um, adding on to the definition of uh, karma. Uh, but let me uh, ask you again about you know how many types of karma are there? If you uh, can elaborate, you know the different types of karma that we may done, you know through different ways or you know in which it give to result as bad or good or whatever. Actually, there are many kinds of karmas or many types of karma. But here, first, I would like to elucidate or explain um, three types of karma. It means um, kaya karma, that is called bodily action. And vajji karma, it means verbal action. And mano karma, it is called mental action. So any um, action happens bodily, like killing, stealing, and um, committing any so intercourse cause through our body is called um, bodily action. Bod bodily action or kaya karma. And any action that happened through our speech, like speaking lies, speaking harsh words, or abusive speech, or telling lies, and so on, these are called vajikama, mean verbal action. And for mental actions, for example, when we think about ill will and covetousness, and we want to like a thing to find a way to kill someone that is called mano tama mean mental action and actually the word karma is not referred to good or bad yet according to buddhism only when we do actions accompanied by our bad intention it is called akosala karma in karmas that is performs with bad intention. And if any action that is performed without bad intention will be performed action with good action or volition, it is called kosala karma because uh, the karma is performed in the righteous way or good way without having any bad intention. So the word karma is um, not the bad or good yet, only accompanied by good intention, we call Kosala Kama, and it will perform action accompanied by bad intention or volition, it is called a Kosala Kama. So the word Kama is not um, called any bad Kama or good Kama yet, only accompanied with intention, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. I uh, when you talk about you know when we define the word karma, we should not, uh, you know, be biased like towards only thing which is bad, right? As in the yeah. Khmer, uh, 
uh, word sometimes we misunderstand when we say oh cam you mean cam when we talk about cam so we sometimes not, not sometimes mostly we always think about in the uh, you know in the negative way right as uh, something yeah. as bad but actually cam just means uh, volitional action volitional deed that is performed by one but then we can classify as bad or good based on volition that we have towards you know our action uh, and action again can be done through way uh, through three ways right yeah. uh, through bodily or physical action through verbal action and through mental action like we learn about the 10 akusala kama patha you know the 10 unwholesome uh, deeds you know we have to uh, refrain not to do any evil through the physical body, just like when Sengwati has mentioned, to refrain from killing, uh, taking what is refrain from taking what is not given, refraining from uh, committing adultery or sensual misconducts, and this is the three bodily actions. And again, the four verbal action, refraining from telling lies, from uh, hard speech, from backbiting, and from frivolous talk or nonsense talk. These are the four verbal actions. And the, the, the last is three uh, mental actions, right? Refraining uh, from covetousness, uh, alopa, uh, or apicha, anapicha and refraining from uh, ill will and then refraining from uh, wrong understanding so these are the three mental lessons that you have uh, mentioned and also you talk about the uh, bad karma or good karma so it depends on our volition yeah. so this sounds uh, like very broad subject when we talk about karma in the teachings of buddhism and we should understand in depth not just on the surface level otherwise we may misunderstand about the karma. So further, we will elucidate about how the karma bear result, uh, how it, you know, give, uh, give rise to the consequences when it will be ripened, so and so. But let me hear from uh, Venerable Maha Panyo. Uh, do you have anything else to add on to the different types of karma? If you have, please. Well, the most wonderful Soon, what he had already mentioned everything that I want to say um, in regards to the uh, karma. Yes, karma in, in the United States, most people know it as karma, K A R M A. It's a sans Sanskrit language. And uh, karma, it's a Pali language, which is the original language that the Buddha um, had uh, utilized it during his teachings. Um, and also those three types of kamas as well, you know, bodily, uh, excuse me, verbally and mental, bodily, verbal and mental act, actions. Those are the most important, uh, the most important actions that one should understand that the most powerful uh, karma there is, is the, uh, mental action okay if you don't in your mind you want to kill something you didn't even have to kill it you already committed the bad karma by just thinking about it okay but what i would like to add is that um in machimani gaya 57 um kukuravatika sutta um the buddha elucidated about the four classifies karma into four groups. And those, those are dark with dark, that's the first one, bright with bright result, excuse me, dark with dark result, bright with bright result, dark and bright with dark and bright result, neither dark nor bright with neither dark nor bright result. Now those are in the uh, Kukura Vatika Sutta in Machimanikaya number 57. If anyone wants to read further, you can get into that particular sutta and read more about it. And another sutta that I have read in Machimanikaya is uh, 135. I mentioned earlier, Kula Kam Kama Vibanga Sutta. 
Okay, if you want to know more about karma, uh, please read those. And um, there's also four different classification of karma as well, which I got it from sutta.com, quite, quite lengthy. Um, I will post this uh, in the comments when we get uh, off the line because it's too long trying to elucidate it. So, um, and in regards to my, uh, how do you define this term to answer that? Personally, the word karma is what goes around, comes around, just like I have expounded my bad karma. So, and also, um, which I have just read in Angkuttara uh, Nikaya, saying that if the karma taking place in this particular life, that means it will be ended. Does that make sense? Your yeah. life will no, continue, will no longer have that bad karma. And well, the question is not up yet in regards of why people think that they do good, why the you know, bad karma has come along and will the good karma uh, wash up the bad karma and so on and so forth. I will elucidate that later on. So yes, for now, I, I would like to add those. That's just it, just the in Machiman Gaya 135 and Machiman Gaya 57. Yeah, Those yeah. who said uh, getting uh, know more about the karma. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Pante, thank for you. adding more uh, from the different suttas that the Buddha expounded about the four different types of karma and so and so, especially from the Majjhima yeah, uh, people can, uh, you know, find out more about uh, the theory of karma from those suttas. And I also uh, used to read from other uh, books as well. Uh, sometimes we can see the classification of karma, you know, as guru uh, karma or lahu karma, you know, like uh, vekti karma, like some karma are vekti, then they are referred to in terms of unwholesome karma, they are referred to the five heinous crime, like we call uh, pancha anandriya karma, right? The, the patricide, the killing of one's father, the matricide, killing of one's mother, uh, uh, you know, low hit the pada, um, uh, setting a drop of blood from the Arahant and from the Buddha, harming the Buddha, and also the schism, this, the, the Sangha Peda, this, the Sangha schism. Yeah, so such and such. Uh, again, also, Nijata um, Michadati, you know, like uh, wrong understanding is also one of the Vekti Kama. This is in terms of unwholesome Vekti Kama. And again, we have another different types of uh, wholesome Vekti Kama, like those who have um, accumulated the uh, Chana Kusala Kama, Rupa Vajra Kusala Kama, Arupa Vajra Kusala Kama, and those who have attained to the Lokutra Dharma. So attained to the four stages of enlightenment. This is called the, uh, this is called the wholesome Vekti Kama that can give a great result. Um, so uh, we have seen some different types of karma as well, like the ajina karma, the habitual karma, asana karma, the uh, you know the immediate um, like uh, uh, you know immediate or near death karma, you know, and um, uh, kadatta karma, unspecified karma, a, a lot of things. But I. Uh, I would like to hear more from Venerable Sinwati if you have anything to add on to that. I think it's interesting when we learn the different types of karma because uh, we easily get mixed up and confused uh, whatever we perform in life. We tend to expect result immediately after we do, right? That's yeah, why yeah. some people, especially uh, in, in Cambodia, because I was born and, and grew up in Cambodia and I have heard quite often about this uh, statement that, um, oh, I do a lot of good action, but I never get 
good accent in return. I only get back bad accent. While other people, they perform a lot of bad accent, but you know, they get promoted, they gain a lot of money. So, so how would you explain about this? Uh, thank you, uh, um, oh. TV for this question. And here I also would like to add more points about ties of camera. Here, I also would like to mention four ties um, of cameras. That's uh, their results according to the times or with respect to the time that is their result. And this four type of camera is mentioned as below. Number one is a tatatama with a it means immediate way effective karma. This karma or action, whenever a person performs it, soon it bear a result. No need to wait for next life or in the future life. For example, in our society, if a person go to steal other property and the police saw them, so they uh, saw him, so the police arrest him and take him to the jail. That is, you know, the result of action um, that um, bear result to that person's effectively in this present time, no need to wait for next life or future existence. It is called the Thamma Vetaniya Gamma. It means the action that bear results effectively now. And number two, it means subsequently effective karma. It is like an action with bear results in next life or life hereafter. When we do any bad action right now or any good action right now, but we don't get the result yet. That's why you said nothing just now. Some person now they are doing very good in this life or existence, but they rarely get good result from their good action. They only get bad results from what they are doing good. And they, they confuse that all. Oh, the theory of Buddhism about karma is not correct. They may seem like that, but actually it is not so. Um, for example, when we do good action right in this existence, but we get bad results, according to, Buddh according to Buddhism, the Buddha explained that maybe, maybe we, in our previous life, we did a lot of bad karma or bad action. And that bad actions bear results until now in the present life. And that bad uh, action bear result is not exhausted yet. But when here in this life, we try to do more and more good deed, I think later the result of a good deed will uh, fall upon him then he will enjoy the good result from his good action that, that is uh, doing in this present life. So don't, don't be disappointed about good action that we are performing right now. We should have confidence to do good, good karma in this life, even though we, we still get a bad result, but later on we may get good result from our good action in this life. Yes, and number three, it is called Apra Yat Yat Kama. It means indefinitely effective karma. You know, this karma, it bears results not definitely about the time, you know. Sometimes when we do uh, any action, either good or bad here in the existence. It can bear result right now in this life. Sometimes it bear result for next life. So this kind of gamma is bear result not at specific time. And number four, 
ahausi kama. It means the defunct kama. It means that the action that we have performed will not bear results because the bad kama that we have performed is having no time to bear result. Uh, like in Buddhism, some arahanta they commit bad action in previous life, but here in this life they attain around the hood and they become noble person because the evil action that they had performed in previous life did not have a charm to bear result to him yet. That's why this, it, it means that uh, the bad action uh, is late to bear result to him, you know. That's why it is called a house, karma, I mean, defunct karma, karma. Um, we not have time to bear result to the person who is a doer. Yeah. And um, I think also in Buddhism, we don't have. Um, something like to wash our teen or our bad deed. <laughs> like person do bad deed in the belief, they go to die in the waters and so that they can wash the thing that they committed. And they think that by doing so, they can go to be or to, to heaven after this. But according to Buddhism, it is not so. You know, yeah. We cannot watch our teen that our sin or bad accent that we have performed by washing or dying in the water. But in Buddhism, is encourage us to to do more good action in our present life. If we try to do more and more good action right here in this present time, the bad action that we have performed in previous lives may have not chance to bear result to us. So if we try to do more and more good deeds in this present lives, more and more good deeds, then the good, the result of good Karma will always bear us, uh, bear us a result. At the time, the result of that karma that we performed in pre previous life have, have no more chance to, to bear result. Until it is late to bear result, and at the time we enjoy this result, go deep, until we attain the highest state of a person, like become noble person like that. So that's why in Buddhism, it is encourage us to do more and more good in this present life. Because if our previous life, we have done a lot of, uh, a little good deed, it may not have time to bear results in this present time. Because of, in the present time, we try to do more and more. <laughs> like to overwhelm yeah. it, right? Yeah, that's yeah, why it, it, can, it can stop uh, the result of bad karma in our previous life like that. So. It is, so uh, is it is it something like when uh, my people say for bon liang bap, how how bon, how you know how the merit can can wash the no. the sin? No. How do you explain that? It is impossible. Uh, like uh, when about some like Om Sum, he mentioned in his book that we in Buddhism don't have the rituals to to wash or to clean our sins or bad action like in other relig religions. But we try to do good in order to forget the bad feeling of our bad action in the past like that. So if we try to do good more and more in the present time, we may forget the bad feeling of our bad karma in the past like that. But it doesn't mean that we can't we can run away from our previous bad accent, right? We cannot run away. Mm -hmm. But if we try to to do only good uh, from now on, 
<laughs> the result of bad karma maybe have no chance to bear result. That's why it's yeah. incorrect to do that. Only good, yeah. you know. And so much in time. Buddhism, yeah, in Buddhism, if uh, uh, think that if the person just wash their body with soap or waters or die in the river to clean the things, how about the face and the um, you know other kind of uh, animal living in the waters like tortoise fish and other kinds of um, like uh, something in the river and they they swim in the rivers or the swim swim in the waters every time that's why if they do like that it can clean their body and after that they may be reborn in the heaven or celestial world like that but the Buddha does say that no, not like that, you know. We cannot clean our things or our body just by diving the water or washing our body. It is come from our minds. That's why we need to clean our minds. Yeah, to do something, we need to have intention. When we think, we think only good action, to do only good action. That's why it can stop. Um, something is bad in our life. Okay, thank you so much. So I just try to uh, summarize what you have uh, delivered. I think it is very uh, good insights uh, for uh, our people to get to understand more about the theory of karma. And I think it's important about this idea. Uh, we're not doing good just to, to cleanse our bad accent. You know, we're trying to do good because this good accent that we are performing right now it will be as uh, working as supportive karma, right? Um, yeah. In the previous time, if everything we done, uh, you know, will be forgotten and yeah. will not give result. So that yeah. means that uh, it, it means that um, every action that we do does not bear consequences. So this is not right according to the teaching of, of the Buddha. Whatever we do, you know, intentionally that will give res result, right? Either bad yeah. or good that we, we have performed. But what you are talking about, a whole gamma, the functional yeah. gamma, some types of action we have done uh, may not have chance to give rise because it is too small, tiny uh, action. And yeah. we may have done in the past and we, we may have yeah. forgotten. But because of our too powerful, uh, good karma in the present that we perform, so this uh, powerful good karma, uh, you know, will stay strong so that uh, they don't give a chance to small tiny karma to take place, right? The Buddha have yeah. compared this to like the ox in, you know, in the place where they keep it. And if uh, the most powerful ox will come out first because it, it, it has the strongest power to, you know, to try to get out uh, before any, any other oxys. So that's why uh, the Vekti Gamma, the most Vekti S Gamma uh, will bear first result. Just like when people have done good action and developed their mind to the optimum level. So they become, uh, they, they attain enlightenment, they become noble person, attain any stage of enlightenment. So, uh, the door of woeful abodes, the four apayas, will be closed. They they will have not uh, have to return to any suffering world. You know that is why um, it is important to accumulate more good action in the present. It does not mean that the bad action previously done will be forgotten or will not bear result. But if we do more good. And then uh, we hope that this will become a supportive karma for us to live a happy life, both in the present and for the future as well. But something that we have done, we will, we will not get away from it. You know, one in the Dhamma Bhatta, the Buddha said, no matter where you escape to the mountain, to the river, to the sky, you can never escape from karma, like Venerable Mahamogalana, right? Yeah. Uh, very, very weighty karma he has done in one of his previous lives killing one's mother and one's father. And it kept giving result, you know, life after life until the, his final birth to meet the Samana uh, Godama Buddha. Even 
he has already, uh, you know, attained to as noble person, but he could not get away from his Vekti Gama, Guru Gama. Yeah, so yeah. he cannot get away from the, from the, uh, you know, the robbers and the gangster, they, they try to kill him. And finally he understood, oh, this is my, my Vekti Gama. I can, I will never escape from it. No matter if I have super normal powers, you know, like the most extinguished and powerful um, uh, super normal power he possessed, but he could not get away from the karma. But let me move to Venerable Mahapanyo just to have you clarify about this statement. Like we say, do good, receive good, do bad, receive bad. But, you know, in reality, especially in the context of uh, our people, Cambodian people, some people tend to misunderstand. They try to do a lot of good, but they never get good. How, how would you explain this? Is, is, is this true that uh, the good that they do does not give good result for them or just because they misunderstand you know, about something else, about the way how the karma give uh, rise or give consequences one day? How would you explain that? Well, they have misconstrued it because they don't think way back to the antecedent lives they had to realize because most of the Cambodians believe Buddhism traditionally. In addition, they, it's a mixture of Brahmanism and Buddhism. Okay, So they have to understand that when they do good, it doesn't mean that good will come right away both of the most vulnerableness you have already elucidated. There's a certain way, there's a certain time that the uh, result, the consequences will take place. One has to understand it. If one reads more about Buddhism, you'll, you'll be able to accumulate it, the knowledge more, okay? Um, for instance, you have mentioned about uh, the Arahan Mahamokalana. Huh? that was not the only time that he had the rebirth in hell. During the uh, Buddha, Kako Santo, he was born as a Mara to see, and he killed one of the Arahant. Uh, he killed, well, he did not kill him, excuse me. He possessed a boy, and he had a boy through a rock at the Arahant's head, and there's a little blood came out. Right in that instant, the Buddha Kako Santo uh, turned around in the elephant turn, uh, look at him, look at the boy, but the boy was possessed by Ma Mara Dusi. Uh, so that's enough, Mara. Uh, that's enough. So at that instant, uh, Mahamokalana, when he was born as a Mara Dusi, he got rebirth. He was rebirth in the next world. So he been in hell more than once, you know. Beside committing the uh, madicidal and parasitical kamas. Okay, so you have to look at. It's not just for that instance. You have to think back, well, maybe the good karma that you have accumulated, the good deeds that you had done, it's not gonna give it to you right away because there are different types of karmas which you all have elucidated already, okay? And in regard of wash, washing the bad karma, when you do good karma, that will never happen. It will never happen. Um, look at the Buddha himself. The ring Mahaparinibbana, his bad karma still ensued him on his last breath. And you know which part that I'm talking about? Huh? Because when he, before he, in Mahaparinibbana, he was so thirsty, he asked Bhikkhu Ananda to go pitch the water. Huh? Due to all his good deeds that he had accumulated, that bad karma of him, of his, was uplifted a little bit 
but still he had to pay for it because one of his antecedents lie, he did not allow the cows, the oxes to quench its thirst. Even the Buddha himself who had attained fully enlightenment still had to pay off his bad karma. Okay, so for those who's thinking, oh, I have done such a good deeds. Why am I getting all these uh, bad karmas ensuing me, following me? Do not feel sorry for yourself. Huh? Your bad karma that you have done from your antecedents life may be surpassed the good karma that it, you had done in this lifetime. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So what, what about praying? You know, like people going to the temple, they think praying can give them something. Does that kind of give them something as they wish? You know, some people, they they done a lot of bad things. They feel unhappy. And they feel, you know, misfortune is happening to them. So they approach the temple, approach the monk, asking and praying before the Buddha. Uh, does that gonna give them some good karma? Can the Buddha give them good karma? No, with the exclamation mark. Okay, the Buddha will never be able to give them good karma. We're talking about mindfulness. Huh? They doing, they praying so that they their mind will feel better. Yes, that's it. But the Buddha had in the Mahaparinibbana already. I have heard so many times. May the Buddha bless you. The Buddha cannot bless anyone. You blessing your own self by doing good deeds. Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's it. You cannot bless, you cannot be getting the blessing from the Buddha. All the most vulnerableness, please do not say, may the Buddha bless you. That is <laughs> the wrong things to say. Okay. The Buddha had already entered Mahaparinibbana. He's no longer here. Well, he will never come back to bless anyone again. So for us as Buddhist monks, we need to comprehend that situation. Do not disseminate anything so that they'll be misconstrued about Buddhism. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that yeah. is interesting at that point. Let me raise uh, something, you know, another question which is similar to this. Uh, I think some people may get confused with the word blessing because um, in today's world, you know, uh, even here in the United States, people come to the temple, they hope to get blessing from the monks. So they even call like the Parita recitation, what we call Sotmun or Chumran Preparat. They call a kind of blessing from the monk going to the temple. They hope to get blessed by the Buddha, by the, uh, you know, by the, the Sangha, the, the community of monks. How do you explain that? Is it, is it something about the term? how we use it or something which, you know, uh, should be understood in that case about the word blessing from the monks by through chanting or parita or from the Buddha. Well, when people come, I have the opportunity, my Upasambada Mahayanun, who um, had always given me the opportunity to do the dissemination of Dhamma. And when people ask about that kind of questions, I say, you had to be mindful, okay? You had to be mindful. The Dharma that we intone, those, are, those have different meanings. You cannot get blessings from that Dharma. You cannot, because the Dharma itself, if you can understand them perfectly, huh? You already know, should I be elucidating the term Dharma also? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit of that, yeah. Okay, the term Dharma in Cambodian, it's the period that throw throng sat lok. In English, they do not translate it. They keep it as Dharma because you and I had discussed about it, the most uh, uh, so TV back in the motherland. That, um, so I translated the word Dharma from Cambodian into English, huh? the yeah. natural condition which embrace all beings, okay? So what are the natural condition? Huh? Those natural conditions such as bad deed, good deeds, integrity, dishonesty, huh? bad deed and good deeds, one and bad, 
Okay, those are the things that's embracing us, which we had alluded already. You do good deeds, good deeds will return. You do bad deeds, bad deeds will return. My hair cannot grow on your head, most vulnerableness. My hair will grow on my head. Your hair will grow on your head. Yeah. Whoever do bad deed, you will get that bad deed. Just like I have said it. What goes around comes around. Going to the monastery, having uh, the most venerable monks to intone the Dharma to get those blessings. No, you cannot. So what, what is the meaning of uh, uh, the recitation of the Dharma? Or because sometimes people call chanting. What is the meaning of the chanting? Can you give a little bit of that? What's the meaning of chanting? Could you elucidate that a little bit? Yeah, why, why we do the chanting and uh, what is the benefit of chanting? What is the benefit of chanting, of intoning the Dharma? Well, you know what? If everyone could understand the Pali language, then that would be great. But I don't think anyone could understand it. That's why we're trying to uh, uh, translate it as much as we can from Pali to, uh, to Cambodian. But the benefit of chanting um, the Dharma, hmm, that's a very, very difficult question there. <laughs> 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 because um, uh, what would you say, most of all, soon with tea? What um, is the benefit of that? Yeah, Could you I, do that for me as well? Um, I think it's a little bit uh, difficult for those who uh, do not understand um, the meaning of Pali language in our own mother tongue. And actually uh, for Parita recitation, it's really meaningful and it can uh, give um, um, good things for the people life when the monks chant and people listen. And um, if they understand like you said, the meaning in Pali language into our own mother tongue, it can bring good benefit to their life. For example, the Buddha recite Jayanto, you know, Parita entitled Jayanto. The Buddha said that if you do go deep through your bodily action, verbal action, and mental action, there um, there is a good moment, good times, good auspiciousness for our life, or for your life like that. If they understand, like the Buddha said, uh, I would like to talk in a little bit, something like that. So there yeah, is no like, any day that like is that, bad or good, know? right? You yeah. mean uh, there is no any other day that is that can be called as bad or good, right? When yeah. we do good that day, that time is good, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. If uh, if any fortune teller that oh today their life is good according to the fortune, but if on that day the person go to do bad, then surely we get bad results, you know. <laughs> So they cannot avoid that. It's not about the day itself, right? Which is good yeah. or bad, right? Yeah, it depends on our own karma. Not volition, right? Our yeah. volition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that, that's clear. So, so can you explain more about the benefit of the, the, the chanting of Rita? Because we may, uh, you know, sometimes we use the word, we get blessed from the monk, inviting the monk to do the chanting. Especially we are approaching New Year, Khmer New Year. And traditionally, people invite the monk from house to house to give blessings so the monk do the chanting. What is the benefit of that? Um, as we have mentioned earlier with the Venerable Justin and I also said that if the persons listen to the Parita chanting carefully, attentively and respectively, surely they will get or accumulate God karma. Their mind will be peaceful, and at the time their mind will be free from uh, immoral thought. They only enjoys 
peacefulness of the mind and happiness of the mind like that. So is it because of the listening to the pranita, or is it because of themselves doing good? Um, because uh, they listen that pranita respectfully okay. and mindfully, they can get results right now like that. And if they understand the meaning of the pranita chanting by the monk, and they apply of that understanding into their daily life, they will get good results by listening to that Pareta chanting. For example, the Buddha said, don't do good, please, uh, don't do bad, please do good through your bodily action, verbal action and mental action. And then when they understand that, they apply that understanding in their daily life. They will accumulate good karma and their life will be happy you know, because they don't commit any wrongdoing. That's why when we understand the meaning of parental chanting and we apply, uh, applies in our daily life surely we get a result from our listening. Okay, thank you so much, Pante. Thank you for making it clear. Let, let me put in my way uh, what you have said, just to you know let people clearly get this idea and don't get confused and mixed up with, you know, a different kind of tradition that has been influenced to, to Buddhism. So uh, when we say to get blessing from the monk, actually the monk cannot give you blessing, right? Actually, yeah. your good deed, your good religion itself is the blessing. The monk cannot give you the blessing. The Buddha cannot give you the blessing. But where do you gain the blessing? It is from your good religion through listening to the Buddha's teaching. Because when we do the Parita recitation, it's all from the Buddha discourses, even some, uh, you know, written by commentators uh, later onwards, but they try to take the Buddha's teaching, you know, in a different ways that people can easily do the, it, it, it is made as a format, as a formula, so that in any ceremony, people can apply what the Buddha taught in, in those, to, into those uh, ceremonies, just like when you say, um, like Jayanto. Actually, if we can understand the meaning, that's why we should then listen, you know, uh, just the Pali, but without uh, understanding the meaning. If we can understand the meaning, it is very useful. It is very helpful. It will give rise to wisdom. When you understand like uh, Jayanto, the Buddha said, do good begets good and do bad begets bad. There is no any other day that is bad. Uh, there is a bad day when you do bad, but when you do good, any time, that time, that moment is good for you, right? There is no yeah. good Sunday or bad Monday. There is no <laughs> such thing, but yeah. it derives from your own volitional action. action. Your yeah. good action make your good day. Your bad action make you a bad day. And this is true. This is the law of karma. This is the law of the universe that governs the whole world. And I want to point, uh, point it out too that um, how uh, the, 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 what we say, the blessing of Parita takes place. Actually, it's not the Parita or the, the Dharma that uh, uh, give you the blessing. It is you who undertake, who practice the Dharma that gain the blessing, right? The Dharma uh, does not know anything, right? It, it is abstract. It is, um, um, you know, unconscious, right? It's not a living things, but it is the way in which one practice and then will liberate one from suffering. Like the Buddha said, uh, Dhamma will remain as your teacher. If you want to honor me, honor the Dhamma by practicing the Dhamma. So when you practice the Dhamma, like you're listening to the Dhamma, you understand it and you apply it into your daily life. So that is the blessing, how the blessing comes. It's not from the monk, but it is from your own uh, ex good action, like the respect in listening to the Dharma, the respect in you know paying homage to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, the respect that you uh, uh, venerate to the to the community of monks, to the Sangha, you know that is the blessing. That's why I want to I want people to ex uh, understand about this. Don't mix up uh, where the blessing come from. It's not from anybody else because the Buddha clearly mentioned good action give result uh, give rise to good consequence bad volitional action give rise to bad consequence so when we 
listen to the Buddha's teaching attentively uh, with good respect. That is the blessing. Good respect is a blessing. Good volition in listening to the advice is the blessing, right? That yeah, you can yeah. get it, right? You yeah. can you, you don't get from the monk, but you get from yourself. The monk is only the representative um, who brought the Buddha's teaching to you. But if you don't pay respect to the advice, you don't practice the advice, the teaching, you will not get any benefit. You won't get any blessing, right? So blessing derives from one's own good volition, bodily, verbally, and physically. So thank you so much, both Venerable. And uh, I think because we are uh, running out of time, I would ask the last question. Uh, moving back to Venerable Maha Panyo, um, what would you advise for you know our people as an ordinary living being in society? How would we apply the theory of uh, karma to our daily life? You know, we have good karma or bad karma. So how 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 understanding of uh, theory of karma can help us in daily life? Today? But uh, the place of Venerable Justin is so dark. Can you turn oh, on yeah. the light? <laughs> I, okay, hold on just a second. Let me try to find the light switch. Yeah. Thank okay, you. So maybe Venerable Singhati, you can go first about this question. How can we apply the theory of karma uh, to our daily life because in Buddhism, uh, it strongly emphasizes about the theory of karma, the law of karma, and uh, its effect. The the theory of karma and in the right understanding, samadhi. Samadhi can also mean uh, understanding or believing in karma. How how would that uh, be beneficial in understanding this theory? Um, I think that's according to to Buddhism. Uh, it teaches us to believe in our own karma or action. Don't believe in anything else. We should believe that do good, we get good results. Do bad, we get bad results. It never, the cause and it, uh, effects or results never different from each other. You know, that's why we need to, to do like that. Um, like you mentioned earlier, some people, they're saying that even though they do good karma, then they still get bad results. But actually, it is not so. The cause of our action is never different from um, our uh, it results. It must be the same thing. But that is talking according to the natural law. Natural law, it never be a result different from its cause, right? And if we talk about actions, that there are different results in present time, especially according to the society law, you know, it has the person who judge the doing or the action of the people who commit it. Yeah. So this kind of uh, judgments, it can help the uh, different result from the, the action. For example, in Buddhism also mentioned four kinds of per, uh, personality, like personality because of love, personality because of hate, personality because of fear, and personality because of ignorance. So if uh, a person do bad things, but they can get good results. Because of what? Because of the person who sit to check on the case is uh, biased to that person, you know. It can turn the bad to the good one. <laughs> and according to the natural laws or the law of government, we cannot do like that. Whatever we have performed, we need to accept the results of our action that we have performed is never bear different result from the cause or the action that we have performed. So it is very justice, you know, according to the natural law, it is real, uh, really justice for us. So we should try to do in only good deed for our life. Should not think that do good, get bad result, but do bad, get Good results, we should not think well, it is the wrong way of thinking. We should believe, like the Buddha said, do good, we, we get good results. Like that. Don't think about 
uh, society law. Sometimes it can be biased, you know, it's not true. <laughs> we should believe only the natural law that the Buddha taught. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much, Ante, for sharing that very important point that we have to understand how we perform our ex action on a daily basis out of good volition or out of bad volition because it will condition uh, you know the same consequences as as one's volition so i think uh, this is pretty much important uh, if we uh, understand the you know like the way we grow a seed right if mm -hmm. we grow a mango surely we we will get a mango we will never get a banana you know <laughs> if, if the seed is a mango right yeah. it's easily understood um so what whatever we do we will we, we will get it exactly but we don't know when it will be yeah. it's just a matter of time if, if not in this lifetime it could be life after or many lives after that just like you all have mentioned about the different types of karma that bear result in different existence in different time as well so we should not misunderstand that we do good at the present and we don't get it immediately but others we only see them doing bad but they're so happy they they get promoted they have a lot of powers and money so we don't get misunderstand about that they get good because they still have good supportive karma from their previous existence we don't know what they have done a lot of good action in the past but what we are experiencing some uh, bad result at the present day, it could be from our previous unwholesome bad karma as well. So we should accept and understand this theory. Don't get confused. What we are doing now will give result to the future, tomorrow, next month, next year, or maybe life after. Let me give another an analogy from the Buddha's teaching. Let, let me put in a simple word, the, the rice, we are having in the bowl right now, the, the rice that you're eating right now, it is the result from previous years, right? You have sowed, you have uh, uh, sown the crops from previous years, right? That's why you can eat the rice right now. It does not happen today. You know, what we have done in the past. And so that's why we have the rice and food to enjoy today. So what we are enjoying right now is the result of the past deep. And what we are doing right now will give the rise in the future. There is another uh, statement they said, um, we are what we were and we will be what we are. I think this, this is pretty much similar to you know, what, what comes around, goes around, as Venerable Justin has said, what comes around, goes around. So, in the same, the same way, right? And also, we are what we think. You know? Yeah, we are what we think, because uh, mind is the forerunner, mind is the uh, uh, master uh, of our life. That's why the Buddha emphasizes the importance of uh, training the mind when the mind is well trained. Uh, with wisdom, with morality and discipline. So we will gain a lot of good merit and this will produce a good existence for us as well. Uh, let me move back to Venerable Mahapanyo. What would be your idea concerning with, you know, how we can apply the theory of karma to our daily life based on the Buddha's teaching that uh, stress an important on uh, the theory of karma, believing in karma can be called as a right understanding samadhi. Without understanding or accepting, believing in karma and its uh, result, uh, one can be called as, a, you know, having the wrong understanding, michadhi. How would you explain that to a, you know, simple, practical way of life? Well, uh, you all have mentioned it already, you know, um, and you also uh, brought up the Dhammapada, verse one and verse two. Huh? Mind is the forerunner, et cetera, et cetera. So it is very prominent that we have to be mindful in whatever we, whatever we do, we have to be mindful. For instance, for, uh, for in order to accumulate good karma, the fundamental of it 
is the five precepts. That's how we can uh, apply it to our daily life. Okay, for the um, lay people, huh? in order to accumulate good karma, all you have to do is just five precepts. Huh? You don't need to go to the eight precepts. You don't need to go to the 10 precepts. You don't need to go uh, even ordained it as a monk. There's a purpose for each one of us wanting to ordain it as a monk, huh? which means that each one of us ordained have a different purpose. I personally don't need to become a monk for the third time. Okay, I can just disrobe right now, go back to my former life, former career, which is I am a former project architect. Okay, I don't need to become a monk to gain the average. Okay, lip sakara. I need not. If I wanted that, there goes the ropes. Back to the lay people, lay person. Back then I earned about almost $40 a year in 2008, okay? I don't need this ropes at all. So in order to apply to having good karma in our daily life, five precepts. Be happy in what you have. Whatever you have, just be happy with it. No need to go for more and more. People might say, well, then why do you learn, want to learn more about uh, Buddhism? Oh, that's completely different topics. So good karma coming from good deeds. Bad karma is coming from bad deeds. The theory of karma, it's beyond one's imagination. It's going to be so difficult trying to elucidate it simply, simply, okay? Because the eruditions in the term of karma is beyond one's imagination. The Buddha himself already said it. Don't believe in Tathagata. Go out there and experience it yourself. So to elucidate anything about karma, to have anyone uh, comprehending in karma, it's going to be very difficult. One has to go back and do research of oneself. I don't need to ordain it for almost seven years. Ordain it in front of fire. That's how I translated ordained it. Uh, yeah. I don't need to go that long, but I want to know why was they ordained it in front of fire. It is a Cambodian tradition which concatenates it to Buddhism. Machimanikaya, huh? number six, if a monk should wish. Those are the kind of things that how you accumulate karma, that's how you apply it to, to, to your daily life. Okay, don't just believe huh? another thing that I want to mention is Kalama Sutta. Don't simply believe. There's 10 criteria in there. For those who want to know what I'm talking about, all you have to do, just Google it, K-A-L-A-M-A, -A -A, okay? Then you'll understand more. So back to the Kama situation, experience it yourself. Don't just simply believe in all these three venerable monks here. Go yeah. out and do it, okay? I am a Buddha's votary. I can say that I am not a uh, uh, Devadatta votary. <laughs> Buddha's votary, and I ensues the Buddha's practice, the Buddha's uh, uh, teachings. Huh? So I say the same thing as the Buddha had said. Don't believe me. Go out there and experience yourself. Huh? Whatever we explained to you about the karma, don't go do your own research. Contemplate upon it, cogitate upon it. Okay. The Buddha already said that if you want to know what your past life is like, look in this life. If you want to know what the future life will be like, 
look at this life. That is exactly concatenates it to karma. Okay. So thank you. Thank I you hope so much, that that is, uh, very interesting. And uh, you also raised about you know how the karma will give rise or give result where and when. It is uh, unthinkable, right? The Buddha said in one of the Ajanta Yung, Ajanta Ya. Uh, something which is uh, unthinkable. It's not in the field of ordinary men, but it's only in the field of um, some other hunters like the Buddha who would uh, clearly understand the cause and condition, you know, because he possessed the knowledge of, uh, you know, the past rebirth and also the future um, uh, for sight, you know. So, Anyway, thank you so much, Boss Renable, for sharing the theory of karma. I hope that our audience uh, have learned something, uh, if not much, at least a little bit about the definition of the karma as Boss Renable has um, enlightened volitional, intentional action. It's called karma. And it can be bad based on the bad volition, bad intention. Karma is called as a good, kusala karma, based on good volition or good intention and karma uh, will give rise to, uh, you know, in terms of uh, different time, uncertainty about the time and also about the place and how it would give rise to, but we know for sure what we do, we will get that. Whatever comes around, goes around. If we grow a mango, we will get a mango. If we grow a banana, we will get a banana for sure. We won't, we won't get a coconut when we grow a banana, just to make it clear that what comes around goes around. Our own action, uh, if it is good, it will give rise to good consequence. Bad action will give rise to uh, good, uh, sorry, if it, bad action will give rise to bad consequence. So this is the teaching of the Buddha and it is very, uh, important crucial point uh, expounded by the Buddha about the theory of karma. If one does not believe in one's own action, but believe in other external powers, other external favor or condition that can give us blessing or fortune, this is against the theory of the cause and effect, the law of karma, the law of the universe. Whatever one does, one will beget that like there is a state, there is a saying, whatever a man showed, that shall also be ripped. This is the law of cause and effect, the theory of karma. So thank you so much, uh, Venerable Mangalajito Sengwati from uh, Wat Kemara Ram, California, and Venerable Mahapanyo Justin from California as well for contributing the knowledge of uh, Dhamma concerning with the topic of the Buddhist concept of Kama. It is very broad subject. We have not covered everything in detail, but we somehow suggested some of the suttas and sources during our live show. I hope that audience who have been viewing as well as who will be viewed later on will get access to do more research about the theory of karma. And as Venerable Justin said, don't believe everything what we said, but go out, find out by yourself. And whatever you perform on your daily basis, either good or bad, you experience it by yourself. You can uh, see the, uh, you know, the result right away as well. If you do bad, how would you feel? If you do good, how would you feel at that moment? So you can always observe what's going on in your mind. So that's why be mindful. Always contemplate on your daily activities, whether you move, you walk, you eat, you talk, you sleep, you bathe, everything that you do on a daily basis, just stay mindful, stay alert and vigilant. So this is will be very helpful to uh, practice the good karma. Thank you so much for viewing and listening attentively to the Buddha's teaching that has been shared by all of us. And I hope that um, audience can learn something from this. Last but not, but not least, before ending, I would like to share merit accumulated from this Dhammatana. May, may the merit be shared to all living beings in the whole universe. May all be liberated from physical suffering and mental suffering. I am Biko Muniputa, so we. Uh, live from Sierra and Venerable Justin, Venerable Sungwati, live from California, would like to say uh, goodbye.
Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye for today. Thank you. Goodbye for tonight.